Before we start this episode, we got Guilty Pleasures merch. Look how cute it is. Oh my God, we got Goofy's fat ass. We got Familia Racing Tea. Go get it at tryguys.com slash guilty. Ramble. Thank you to Green Chef and BetterHelp for sponsoring today's episode. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Yeah, Welcome yeah, let's to go. Guilty Pleasures. McAdams Mania continues this week. Bear, 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 bear. We're talking bear. about Mean Girls. A classic. And we're wearing pink, Kelsey. That is the most vibrant pink I've ever seen in my life. It, I don't fuck around when it comes to Mean Girls. It's so pink that it honestly looks like Garrick's wearing a white shirt. It does look <laughs> like I'm wearing. Like you, I like how this is your pink, though. Mm-hmm. It fits you. You dragged him you to filth. And I am wearing, What are you course, wearing, Zachy? The Familia Guilty Pleasure shirt in our hot pink. God, this shirt fucking slaps. It looks so cool. It's like a Miami day glow color pink with Familia, and it says Guilty Pleasures with a pink car. Go order it. Miami day glow? Yeah, I yeah. didn't know day That's glow. Cool. Kelsey said it, and I had to look it up, and it's a quality of color, and I'm a big fan. I love it. There you go. Yours is more day glow from what I've seen online. Yeah, this is day glow. We, th- we wanted this to be day glow. Yeah. This, is, this is somewhere in between. We had to be respectable. What a fun word to say, day glow. Pretty good. It's really good. Yeah, if really you look good. up the quality of day glow, it's kind of like highlighter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Me you girls, guys, we're doing my Super Bowl. This movie. This is the, probably my f- most favorite episode we've ever done. Wowie. I mean, this was a, a highly requested episode for a long time, yeah. and, and we put it off because I was like, I didn't know what there was to say about it. It's it's a great movie, but we're going to say a lot of stuff, and it's yeah. going to be great, and it's going to be a great episode because we're really good at this. And it's McAdams Mania. Like, why wouldn't we do it? It would be criminal to yeah. not talk about perhaps the most iconic McAdams character, yes. Miss Regina George. Uh, if you don't know, this month at Guilty Pleasures is McAdams Mania. We're doing four episodes celebrating the wonderful Rachel McAdams and yeah, today we're talking about Regina George. I mean, do we even just give a synopsis? Mean Girls is the new dork loser trying to fit in in high school. Can nice. she take down the plastics or will she become one of them? Yeah. This good. is Mean That's Girls. Nice. Do you guys remember like... Do you remember anything about this movie coming out? Like, Absolutely. What was your I, I saw this in theaters and... I, I cite Mean Girls along with Ocean's Eleven, where <laughs> when I was growing up, I just was like, oh, I thought that movies were just always supposed to be this good. Ah. And Mean Girls is one of those movies where it is a, a genre film. Like, this is a teen girl comedy. Mm-hmm. And so we have in our mind what that's supposed to be. We've done Sleepover on this show, which I adore. Came out the same girl as Mean Girls. Same, sorry. Came out the <laughs> same year as Mean Girls. And... For a long time, teen girl comedies were seen as uh, lesser. Gosh. Yeah. Um, and you, which you also gosh, gosh, <laughs> very nice. Um, it's similar to the way that Ocean's Eleven, like, oh, that's like a what actiony heist movie. Like, that's not yeah. going to be. But this is just a, an expertly, perfectly God-tier. executed god tier version of it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be real. Ooh. Um, I think I don't like your tone. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I think that what's happening. This is because of the brilliance of Tina Fey. Yes. I don't think that Tina Fey has written a bad thing. If I'm being if I'm being honest, sure. it is always in line with what she does. Mm-hmm. Um, from this to uh, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt mm-hmm. to um, Thirty Rock, bangers, 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 and it is a banger, and it is a, a, a fucking. Neat and concise script. And every her time. work when she was the head writer on SNL. On, uh, she is course, a SNL. Yeah. thing of her as a performer. Phenomenal yeah. writer. Mm-hmm. Better writer than she is performer. And yeah. did you guys know that this is adapted from a book? I did, and I looked into that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll fuck it. Fun fact right out the gate. Oh, yeah. so uh, this was based on a book, and I, I don't have Queen the title. Bees and Wannabes. Thank you. But that is a an unscripted book. It's about you know high school, and so Tina took that. Said, I think that th- there would be a great movie in here, but she still, yeah. she came up with the whole plot, all the characters, yeah. uh, everything in this movie is original. Yeah. Queen Bees and Wannabes was actually made for parents to like understand, to understand the ways of funny. high school, so like the psychology of high school. Like we are, we're so fucked up <laughs> that they were like, the parents need a guidebook, like a, a documentary for reading. <laughs> so That's funny. so fun. It, it's so fun. And I hate to compare her to other um, creatives, but in the same way that Phil Miller and Chris Lord took Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and turned it into something completely different and completely hilarious and can stand on its own, right? 
um, she did that with this book and I, I want to say like created an iconic in, in uh, a, a genre not a genre creating, but like no genre defining, genre piece, defining 100%. piece of art. Yeah, this is that. Yeah. What was it, Kelsey? For you, I assume you saw it in theaters. <laughs> oh. This was one that you not only went and saw once with your friends, you grabbed your next group of friends, saw it again. Nice. You rented it when it came out. Yep. You got it on DVD. You modeled your outfits after it. You started to parody it in your life. You used the phrases. I mean, the the amount of effort and money I put into outfits to try and look like some of these girls. I mean, it came out in 2004. 2004. So I was freshman in high school. Yeah. Going, who am I? What's my identity? Mean girls will be my identity. <laughs> I'm gonna try and dress like them and talk like them. And like, it was just such. You got the wrong uh, takeaway from the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, fully. This made me want to go like more into like g- popular girl clicks and like having. Kelsey stopped watching around the halfway point. Yeah. She's like, I'm gonna be like Katie. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna become a plastic. We're, oh we're trying to like make up rules for like our girl gang. Like we had a nickname. We were. Composed of three men and two boys and, or excuse me, three boys and two girls in our clique in high school. And we were called the rock stars. You and told we me about the story. So yeah, funny. so you guys you know this. Story, yeah. So like we tried to have like an apparel and like a look to us. Shut the fuck up. Oh yeah. Did you have, you had you have any dress baby coats? Watches. Do you have any pictures? We were famous stars in straps or babe. Like, yes, I'm Th- sure. I'm sorry. This is a very rich <laughs> group of people. Because last time I checked, Babe is very ex- expensive. It was not. Back in the day, this was like back when Ed Hardy reigned supreme. And I remember like, when Babe first came out. It's like, hey, it's this new trend this, or like, new thing from wear. Japan. It's uh-huh. going to be cool. It was not as expensive. Now it's stupid It was expensive. still expensive, yeah. but not yeah. what it is now. Yeah, not what it is now. But I still yeah. remember it being like inaccessible yeah. for me in high school. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it came from the drug money. Got it. Yeah. Uh-huh. It uh-huh. was supposed to. We were supposed to go. Anyway. This movie, to this day, though, is still something I will stop and watch when it's on. I will go to the events of it when it's on. I will go to the screenings of it when it's on. Did you watch the play? The I musical. have listened through it, but I think it came out right as the pandemic. Yeah. So I didn't get to see it. Mm-hmm. But I've heard all the songs. And I hear it's fantastic. Yeah. It's- yeah, I saw it. It's fun. It's They're making a movie of it. And our girl Renee Rapp was Regina George from Sex Lives with College Girls. Yeah. 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 She's great. Um, but yeah, this movie goes down in starting its own genre of comedy that so many have tried to follow yeah. since. Did Garrick at your school... Well, okay, let's talk about the movie a little no, bit. No, 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 no. What is the question? Okay. At your school, <laughs> did you have the, the... Did your popular group have names? Everybody had like different cliques, yeah. okay. I feel like. It wasn't like a... Oh, this is the popular group of people. They They, they were for sure there. But there was different like... Gangs, I want to say, yeah. <laughs> in like a like a weird way. Like I, I remember, there's like the outstanding O's and like the public max <laughs> and shit like that. They did have names. Yeah, no, they had names. O's, they had fucking names. But I don't know if it was like this is the popular group. Everyone like, thought they were the popular group. Everybody too. thought they were the yeah. popular group. Like the football players thought they were it. The basketball guys thought yeah. they were it. The I, hot but girls, it wasn't. It wasn't the like boys. something that someone else came up with. They were naming themselves. Ooh. We, uh, I, I've talked about this, I think on Tripod, but maybe not here, that the popular hot girls yes. in my school, it was Jazz Jazz, yes. because their names were Jenny, Ariel, Sally, yeah. Jenny, Allie, you whatever. You talked about like this on Sleepover. It's That's so funny know. to me. Uh, but this movie does so much right, and the first thing that it brought back to me, and I, I'm a sucker, Clueless does it, this movie does it, anytime a movie brings you through the clicks in the school, yep. it brought back the defining trauma of my adolescence yes. which is the cool kids table yeah i it is Ugh. still a wound yeah. and in I, I got over it a little bit by high school i've never gotten over it no. i'm still not <laughs> over it. uh but in middle school there were for the boys there were two tables but really there was one table mm-hmm. there was the cool kids table and there was the spillover table oh. yeah. and i remember sitting like back to back with the cool kids table and like laughing loudly to join yeah. the conversation behind me, but you're not part of it. You're at the spillover table. Damn. But like, you're trying to like give your energy to yeah. the fucking Regina Georges behind you. I still yeah. have dreams about going to my high school cafeteria and finding a seat. 
like that it still follows me into like recently I, okay you so hear that kids it doesn't get better, it doesn't get better. Had, did you guys I, also have like lunch period one and lunch period yeah, two yeah, yeah. yeah. so like period. every year it was like a fucking shit show yahtzee scramble of like yeah. where were you gonna get placed and for us it was always the seniors always yeah. the seniors were the coolest table so our arts always the seniors is the coolest table but our so the way that our our this cafeteria, I guess, was set up. There was like benches. It was outside. Of course, I'm from oh, California. Wow. That's right. It's outside. Um, so uh, and then it would like spill over into like the quad or like a walking area or whatever. So kids would be um, the popular kids would be sitting on the tables, of course, sitting on the tables, of Real course, cool. uh, looking out at the quad. And then they're higher above, they're everyone. Higher above everybody. And then the like unpopular kids would be actually sitting at the table behind it. Ah. So like. You're just looking at people's butts as you're eating. <laughs> so wow. it was a what? very. They had their fucking backs to they them. They had their back. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's, that's where harsh. you would sit. And, there was um, also eat like lunch. levels of good and bad cool kids. Mm -hmm. Like the bad kids, like us, we were like the drugs, the money, the popular. And then there were like the good kids who were like the varsity players yeah. and like. You know, they won class president and stuff. So there was like different levels of it too. Yeah, there, there's that one scene at the beginning of Book Smart where you're just like the the way that that fucking rung true in my high school, where you're looking at all these popular kids and you're just like, man, they they're really like partying. I bet they didn't get into good schools. <laughs> they all got into good schools. Oh, Every <laughs> fucking single one of them. And you're just sitting there like, oh god, I wasted my life. They got into better schools, and most of them mm -hmm. went to USC or UCLA. And they partied. And, and they party. They hooked up. And they hooked up. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. It hurts me to this day. I'm a virgin and I'm going to Emerson. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get into a fucking good school. It Damn. hurts. Anyway. Fuck. Yeah. And you know what's so funny about this movie too is like. It's going to like go on my tombstone. <laughs> yeah. 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 I wasted my high school Emerson. years. It's like this should be us like talking about Lindsay Lohan. Yeah. This should be us being like, this well, I'm going to. is the I'm Lohan going to. movie. I'm going which to. like, yes. I'm going to. She is Don't the, you put my Lilo she down. Is the I'm not gonna put her down. She is the it. vehicle that introduces us to Regina George, yes. played by the great Rachel McAdams, to Amanda Seyfried, mm -hmm. to Lizzie Kaplan, mm -hmm. to all of these phenomenal Tina Fey as the Tina teacher. Fey. So all of these amazing actors, and you're just like, damn, they, they they're washing her. If, if if I'm being honest, they, they are. are washing. She her. plays the straight man in this. Yeah. that like goes a little kooky. Yeah, but everyone else in this is a caricature of the tropey teen stereotype, and is perfect. I mean, yeah. let's let's give some I, love. I will say that they are again with it being a, a genre defining thing. Everything after is trying to be their car caricatures. I think that they weren't caricatures when it came out. I think that they were <laughs> so caricatures. The way you're saying that word is so funny. He's trying so hard to say it right too that he's This he's, is like he's a Tupperware moment. Yeah, I'm just trying to just be like, all right, I, I don't use this word in my uh, regular <laughs> vernacular. It's that thing where you, you know a word when you see it written, but you yeah. never actually said that loud. No. And I'm going to say it really fast and hope that no one notices it. Caricatures. Yeah. <laughs> Caricatures. <laughs> caricatures. It's, it's caricatures. I'm, yes. I'm sorry. Caricatures. Yeah, but not that anymore. Was not anymore. All, it isn't. We all were just gonna try and like keep going, but we couldn't. It couldn't. Y'all would couldn't. be losing And by your the minds. way, for the rest of the time, it's caricatures. It's caricatures. I'm it's sorry. Caric. Caric. That's but how you said it. I think yeah, caricature. <laughs> I think that they they weren't caricatures when they came out. I thought they were like complex characters. And then um, everybody was just like, "Well, we have to make it a we mean girl." Like, we, we need a Regina. We need a Regina. Exactly. We need a yeah. Uh, since this is McAdams mania, yeah. Shall we begin with the queen herself? Yeah, Literally carried in yeah. by by High like seven buff men. Minions. Do you know that this movie came out the same year as the Notebook? Yes, it did. The same she, the, re, the, the reason why she is wearing a blonde wig is because she could not change her hair color for the notebook. What? She is the greatest, She's the greatest actress fucking of all time. actress of that's, maybe of all time. That's, that's fucking, that's insane. Range. That is insane. To be How filming those two things at the same time. I feel if, if you're not trying to change your hair color, that's like. 
What's my guy that played Superman? Oh, fuck. Uh, uh, Henry Cavill Henry with the Cavill. mustache. I <laughs> fucking love Henry Cavill. But him and the mustache. They had to digitally edit out the mustache for the... Uh, the guess how old she was. She was young. I'm going to guess like, what, 24? You got to guess? 23? Um, tw- 21? 26. Damn. Wow. She's older. Wow. Damn. That's... Not older. I mean, for playing a high schooler. Uh, she's old. Yeah, as fuck. yeah, yeah. Right. She's, she's also playing a seventeen-year-old. In That's the CW Young. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> she is just so funny and vicious yeah. and mean, but like lovably mean. Where I just enjoy watching her. The the way that you get to see her play mind games with the other characters because it's it's not your typical quote-unquote dumb blonde at all. Oh, it is no. just, this so is smart. a conniving, smart the person. The long blonde this hair is, is, a, is a, it's a cover. This is a serial killer. Yes. If I'm being <laughs> honest. evil. The, this is somebody who does the same type of conniving, Moriarty type of um, evil deeds, Inflicted but just in a high hand. school um, venue. And you don't get to see her scream until... The peak of her yeah. collapse, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, which for a villain and- is so hard to do. When she's just biting and she's got this sort of sing songy voice, yeah. and everything I love she your says bracelet. is matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And that's where you get to learn that high school girls are the fucking scariest creatures of all goddamn time. Terrifying. The fact, I mean, just going off of that scream scene. Um, when she does that, th- this whole thing happens with her, and the th- she's like. She's been purposefully uh, sabotaging knows my every life. Detail this yeah. movie. Yeah. We're not <laughs> okay, okay, anything. I'm sorry. In that, I'm the sorry. The Calteen bars, the uh, skanks, uh, yeah. Who the cares? boyfriend, yeah. the hot bod, everything has been taken from her. So in that screen uh, scene, her screaming and then going to the burn book, something that you have been threaded in as it's like this is where we vent all of that stuff. She goes in, vents, and then she puts her own face down. About all of these mean things that and happen, you go, oh, and you're just shit. like, oh this, fuck, what oh, is she? Shit. What yeah. is she plotting? Stank is a fugly slut. So for someone, do not trust her. Yeah, for someone I to <laughs> do that level of mastery? plotting, mastery in a time of crisis, that and is an look, evil fucking person. The look she gives when she lifts it yeah. up, and she's so breathing cool. heavily. And she knows she's done the greatest trick of them all, that yeah. she's about to bring them all down with her. Let's talk about Green Chef. Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. You can switch between the two brands, it's awesome, and now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount along with us. Now you can choose from over 50 weekly menu and market items with the option to mix and match meals in the same box without changing your plan. Green Chef is the one-stop shop for quick breakfast, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, and more that you can easily add on to your weekly order. You craving more servings of a favorite recipe? Boom, one click, you can double the portions of your weekly order. And they make it super easy. Uh, You can swap protein in any meal that features chicken, beef, or salmon. Green Chef, of course, is the number one meal kit for eating well with dinners that work for you, not the other way around. Go to greenchef.com slash guilty60 and use code guilty60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Again, greenchef.com slash guilty60, promo code guilty60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. In a given week, say a given day, I'm, you know, spending so many hours responding to emails and taking the dog for a walk. I, I am spending all this time giving energy to other people, which is great. But how much time am I actually spending on myself? Which is why I think it's so useful to have once a week an hour set aside where I can talk to my therapist and check in with myself, see how I'm feeling. And BetterHelp makes it so easy. I can be anywhere I want to. I can do it from the comfort of my home, go on a nice walk. And if something comes up in my mind in between sessions, I can shoot them a message. I'm going to get a timely and thoughtful response right there in the app. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash guilty pleasures today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Guilty Pleasures. 
The oh first God. scene where Regina meets Katie mm-hmm. and she sits down to the iconic, I love your bracelet. Where is it from? Katie. You're f- I thought she pronounces it Katie, though. She does. She goes, mm, I'm going to oh, call you Katie. Katie. I like, okay. Uh, the, the, wait, if you're from Africa, why are you white? So you get this just incredible scene, but uh, uh, Regina says, you're pretty. Oh, thank you. So you agree. You, you think, think you're, you're pretty. really pretty. <laughs> it is. Yeah. I don't think that I've ever seen a character more outwitted, more outmatched. This is like Hannibal Lecter meeting Clarice yes. for the uh, first time. Yes. <laughs> this is I can't, the, the, the only thing you can compare it to are serial killer scenes. Yeah. It's insane. And the, the interesting thing is we really do believe and I, I do. I believe this. I believe she was really recruiting Caddy. Oh, she says, I'm going to call you Caddy. Her name is Kitty. Whatever. She, I think Isn't she really what? was recruiting her to be a part of the plastics. I don't think she ever saw being undermined more harshly than she could undermine someone. Mm-hmm. I think she really did believe that Katie Herring was coming in to be an addition to the plastics. She mm-hmm. was going to control her. Yeah. She was going to be a minion to As her. She does. But a new toy. she did not think that she was going to bring them down. And you don't think that she was bringing in Katie as like a joke, right? No, no she let this girl she, into her world. I genuinely think I she think was like, so, I think we can right. model yeah. her, we can mold yeah. her into be what we want her to be. We yeah. can Shut control up. her. Shut, Shut up. up. I'm not saying anything. Yeah. yeah. It's just, um, I, I'm trying, like, I want to have Regina George and Loki in a room and watch Loki <laughs> crumble to dust. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I, I genuinely I don't know that I could think of a single film character that could stand toe to toe with her. Boo, you whore! <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing yeah. is watching this movie. I, my notes are worthless because they're just all quotes. Lines. Mm-hmm. And I, I knew this movie was good. I, can I make an admission? Yeah. I was a little nervous. I was like, I hope this movie holds up. <gasps> oh. I knew that there would be some things that have aged not well, and we'll talk about that. Mm-hmm. But. Comedy is very of its time. It's very hard to have a comedy that plays just as well 20 years later. And this absolutely does. Is yeah. butter a carb? It is, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I could go all day. Oh my God, Dan DeVito, I love your work. That's just like the rules of feminism. That's yeah. Damien. Yeah. yeah. Every line. You Get in, g- losers. We're going shopping. That. It, I we say, say that. Every, 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 every day. It, it is. It is. I think that this movie... The limit does not exist! Yeah. I think that this movie does... Um, she doesn't it, even go here! It has, like, the, the Beatles effect, where if you go back and listen to a lot of pop culture songs and things that are in commercials that have been covered, you find out. It's like, oh, this was originally done by the Beatles. Oh, my God, I didn't know that. And then you watch this movie, and you're like, oh, that's why people say that. That's why people say this. This is where this comes from. And for you to do that in 2004 and it not being like a movie like fucking Casablanca or some shit is insane. I think that 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 for you to be able to quote and see so many references from something Still, that is kind of recent. And everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Even nerds She and doesn't even go here. Twitter. Like the fact that I I say that you will all, the time, all the time. You will get and you will die. Yeah. I don't know if you guys fuck with the band Wet Leg, which if you don't, you should listen to Wet Leg. They rock. Hot music but, wreck coming from our musical god, Zach. Uh, yep. in, this, in the song Chaise Long, they have a line, is your muffin buttered? Oh. Would you like us to assign someone to butter, butter your, your muffin? muffin? There you go. And I'm like, wait, I f-, and then they go, excuse me, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. <laughs> excuse, and I, I, I forgot that that was in this movie. Caddy here, or uh, Regina George wore army pants and flip flops, so I wore army pants and flip flops. It's oh not God. my fault. I have a wide set and a heavy. Oh no, it's I it's I can't help it if I have a wide flow and a yeah. heavy set vagina. vagina. Yeah. The amount to which I quote that. Yeah. And by the way, I don't have a vagina. What? Yeah. But I say that a lot. It's great. Uh. We we will keep you here all night. We can only keep them here till four. We, we will, will keep, keep you here, here till four. <laughs> Fucking good. It's just good. It's just so well written. I'm not I, like, like normal moms. I'm a, I'm cool, a cool mom. mom. I'm a cool mom. You girls keep me young. Oh my god. Rocking around the Christmas tree. I've seen that parody. You yeah. go, get Glenn Coco. You, you go, go, Glenn Coco. Coco. That I think I'm is the number the one. My number one line. Thank yeah. the girl you on go. the bathroom floor. Uh, Wasn't like Jackie. She knows me. You should be screaming, oh, Kevin G. Oh, Kevin G. <laughs> it is, I, I think this might be like the this most quotable movie. One of the most quotable movies. Ever. One of the most God quotable movies. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I, 
all of those lines just like rung something deep inside you. Right? 100%. Exactly I mean, I know where they exactly where they are. I know exactly what the frame looks like. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the entire movie is so iconic. And I think you're right, Garrick. It's like, it is this historical thing where yeah. all the rom-coms afterward, all the movies about high school afterward are doing their variation on this. Yeah. We watched Do Revenge, which yeah. we adored. Yeah, it's great. It's just an echo of this movie. Yeah. Right. If we loved it- It was the closest I had seen something come right. since mm -hmm. Mean Girls, where yeah. I was like, this knows what it's doing. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned Jingle Bell Rock. Ugh. It will n uh, never not be iconic. Mm -hmm. That scene is- Really excellent. Yeah. Yep. It's good. And I it was one of those where I'm like, do I do we just remember this because of like the costumes and whatever? No, it's a great it's scene. It's a really good scene. I still remember that thigh slap to this day. Oh, the you, thigh slap. You and it just exactly. sounds like a fucking fucking whip. And that you watch GIF? their parents just go, Oh God. Oh. He's just, just shocked at the fact that their little girl is up there. But isn't that, that, that so thing. true that like the the character Amy Poehler plays, which like by the way, I love that Tina Fey was like put my best friend in this movie as yeah. the mom who gets her nipples shot off by Stealer. a chihuahua. Yeah. yeah, it's like the fact that you you also cover you know the mom who's way too cool that lets the kids drink mm -hmm. there. Then you have like the helicopter parents, like Caddy's family, like don't ever throw a party. It's like they had it all. I I, I also love um, Tina Fey's role in it, where it just kind of feels like. She is watching herself make the mistakes that she made in high school. Yeah. And it's it's such a fun and cute like comparison or parallel between mm -hmm. the two of them where she's just like, I'm really disappointed in you. I'm I'm really I was really hoping the best for you and all of that. And knowing I think that knowing that she's the writer of the movie, it makes it feel a little bit more And there's some good lessons uh, in there. Yeah. Oh, there's a ton of good My lessons. My father, the inventor of toaster strudel. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to keep Go so for it. interrupting yeah. Go for with it. quotes. I think we should have a rule that at any point in this episode, you can interrupt with a quote if yeah. you remember one. Okay. Fair enough. Cool. Fair enough. And none for Gretchen Wieners. <laughs> <laughs> no. Seeing a teacher outside of school is like seeing a dog walk on its hind legs. That <laughs> one I still say to this day. I um, it, it was upsetting to me watching that I am at the point in my life where I did relate most to Tina Fey's character. And that, mm. that was a dark realization. Yeah. How about I answer when my shirt isn't see-through? Almost as mad as fact that I get when my realize my sister named my nephew Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> I how did you feel about T Tina wrote in a little uh, boobage shot for her right to start the movie? Yeah. She's like, yeah. By the way, I got it. I'm a hot teacher, mm -hmm. but I'm not it. your fucking yeah. friend because yeah. I'm a pusher, Katie. I push people. I push my ex husband, and now I'm gonna push you. Listen, man. Tina Fey bad as hell, bro. She <laughs> like, is. I don't know what else to to say. If you've and never read her book, highly recommend. Oh, really? What is Bossy what? Pants? Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I gotta watch it. And she tells an incredible story in that that made me fall in love with her. Mm. Uh, or maybe it was Amy Poehler's book talk, talking about Tina Fey. Anyway, there's a story where she's working at SNL. She's at the writer's room for the first time. Yep. And she makes a really gross, like, you know, gross joke for a girl. And Jimmy Fallon goes, ew, I don't like that. And she goes, I don't fucking care if you like it. <laughs> <laughs> and that was like their first day ever meeting. Yeah. And Love everyone said it. the room just went completely fucking silent. And everyone was like, from that day on, everyone respected you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I don't fucking care if you like it. Say the fucking word. Oh, can you imagine? You can just see Jimmy Fallon going, ew, I don't like that. I don't fucking care if you like it. <laughs> you know that she's cool too because... Like, if you compare her to that class of SNL as well, she yeah. has just stuck to the projects that the she thinks that she, is dope. Yeah. And that's it. Say yeah. crack one more time. Crack. <laughs> we forgot one of the best. What? You can't sit with us. Oh, oh my wow. God. Yeah. The podcast. It's a podcast. Ugh. So good. I am um, watching this. I, uh, I miss house parties. Oh. When Every I tell you that was my house, time. that oh, was my house. A lucky, keg in the tub. You lucky son of a bitch. A keg or two. We had we were on a cul-de-sac, so there was ample parking. We backed up to a, a, the only wooded conservation in our entire like city, so there was no one behind us, no one to call the cops on us. We were bad, bad girls. <laughs> Katie, tell me you look sexy with this hair pushed back. You look sexy with your hair pushed back. <laughs> I yeah I I I miss house parties. I miss um, not being able to go to house parties uh, because of uh, for, they were mostly on Friday nights in uh, my family. What were you doing Friday nights? Um, so I was raised Seventh Day Adventist, so we observed the Shabbat Sabbath. 
you know, I think about this too. So I don't fucking do Sabbath. I don't do anything yeah, remotely yeah. religious. But the idea of having one day where there's no technology. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I probably need that. Yeah. Mm. It's just like something to, to break up the days, I think, because um, not working on a weekend is, is what you definitely need. Yeah, I don't do that, but I, I definitely need it. Yeah. Uh, but then it all becomes extremism and they like don't push elevator buttons. Yeah, I'm like, that's, right. that's, on, just that's push where the beca- fucking button, bro. That's where it becomes a uh, burden. That's um, where I was like out. Any hoozle. Yeah, anyway. uh, we talked about the whole cast, but let's give them each a moment for their flowers. Amanda Seyfried as, what's her character's name? It's not Gretchen. It's um Donald. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um. oh my God, are we wow. all having a No one fart? look it up. No one no. look it up. Okay, first one to get it. Gretchen wellness. Wieners. Uh, Caddy and, Herring, Regina George. And, and, and audience, if you know it, I want you to scream, scream at us. I want you to scream and say, you stupid little guilty whores. You and she just the bo- she's like, I'm uh, the boobs. I, my boobs weather. can tell when it's raining. That's I have like ESPN amazing. or something. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, anyway. Oh my God! No, nope, who's gonna ne- be the first one to remember? We're never gonna know. No, yeah. Karen. Karen. No, it's Karen. Karen. There you go. <laughs> nice. The very, original, the original very nice. Karen. Yeah. Kelsey, the original you get another Karen. bite of popcorn. Yay! <laughs> Thanks, guys. I haven't eaten today. Uh, she is just the perfect dummy. Amanda Seyfried. I'm thrilled now that she. What? She won an Emmy. She yeah. like people are like, okay, cool. We She's fucks with her. But yeah. I've loved her since Veronica Mars. And oh. I. Yeah. That's that's my uh uh. What's her name in that? I just oh was God, thinking about no the other idea. day. Wow. I mean, even still, that's it's it's so her trajectory is so cool. I was looking up. I don't know if you guys know this, but on IMDb, they rate the popularity of Star uh, Meter. The Star Meter. Yeah. yeah what are you at? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I think if we look all of ourselves up right now and feel real bad. Um, but she is at number four. What? Yeah. What? Amanda Seyfried? That's, yeah. by the way, incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> you love Lady yeah. Black Mombazo. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like when you win, there's no way that she's the fourth most famous person. <laughs> she is at number four. I think that it changes might, every day. No? I love that. Um, it does change every day, but it's just like if w- w- based off of your online references and all that stuff. Hell yeah! Way who to do go, you, Amanda Seyfried. Who do you think is number one? Jennifer um, Lawrence. No, okay, it's and it's. Why right are you now. smiling? He's smiling, so it's got to be someone we love. Stanley Tucci. No, Vin Diesel. No. I was thinking like Ryan Gosling or the something Rock? because uh-huh. of Anna Kendrick. Are we close? Yeah. How far? Are we? Who, okay, pretty we got to think right now. We're pretty Holy far shit. away. Is it Vin Diesel? No. Fuck. <laughs> How far away are we? Give us a clue. Pretty far. Is Give it? Give us a clue. One word. No. Come on. No. Is it? Oh, it's Chris Pratt. It's none of the Chris's. Is it a woman? It's a man. No, it's give a us guy another in a clue. movie. Has it come out yet? Then no, it's a series. The uh, both series have come Timothée out. Timothée Chalamet. No. Jesse Plemons. No, it's a it's series television series. What network? Huh? What no, network? It's television series. <laughs> oh, he's in a lot of television series. What? Series is series S- several Se- series. He plays the same type of person in the series. Bateman. No. Uh, uh, Steve Carell. No. Oh my God. It's a series. It's What's about the most to come out. Thing ever? No, it is not about to come out. They have both come out. Both. both. Same type of character. Amazingly popular. Amazingly popular. Kieran Culkin. You guys Jeremy are Jeremy Strong. You guys are kid. You gotta be fucking kidding. Okay, me. The, guys, the get most your popular, fucking shit the most together. Popular standing up now. He has Gate, walked away. Change your thing. Gate Matarazzo. No. Most is it Gaten? No. I'm I'm very upset. I want to give me a clue. network. Eliminate one of the networks. No. Okay, tell me eliminate. what network it's not. Is it a streamer or it's is it not a network? Disney Plus? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my okay. God! Is it Pedro Pascal? It's Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. Daddy, it's obviously. So it's, it's so, so easy. easy. It's By right the way, Goofy's right. fat ass has just been littered with Pedro Pascal. Obviously, because we're human. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was banned from the group chat, but that's awesome. Um, <laughs> we're not banned. You went on maternity leave. <laughs> By true. maternity, I mean paternity. <laughs> it's right. Um, well, did you know that Gretchen Wieners is the voice of Eliza Thornberry? Oh my God! Yeah, that Hi, is a fun I'm Eliza, fact. and this is my crazy life. Yeah. Zach, you can come well, out now. He found us. <laughs> Zach, <Zachary, laughs> come sit in your chair. I can't. I'm okay. still upset by that game that we played. And That's if you crazy. Cut it out, we'll cut out most of it. Sense. We're cutting out most of it. It won't make sense. No, why I'm over all here. the guilty horse will want to play. They're, They're all <laughs> screaming. They <laughs> 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 can't. Gary Karen can't hear them. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what two series were you talking about? Um, the Mandalorian, Last of, Last of Us, and The Mandalorian. Oh. He's a dad in both of them. Oh. Um, so you guys mentioned your mom's chest hair. <laughs> okay, I fell. Uh, you guys oh, mentioned no. uh, Lilo, Lindsay Lohan, in a somewhat disparaging way, and I'm going to stand up for okay. history. All right. I think that Lindsay Lohan is shockingly great 
Yeah. In this movie. Okay. Yeah. And I'm not saying, she's ever done. I'm also not saying she is bad. No, she is I heard great. you. No, I heard both of you. And she Lindsay, is, if you're listening, I'm standing up for you and they won't. Yeah. She is great in this movie. It's just she is surrounded by people who are, are just incredible. better. Or just who are just better. She, but it's, this it's is by far up. her best, best, best mm-hmm. acting. Oh, I mean, yeah. it's this and I know who killed me. Uh, <laughs> Tie for one and two. Herbie, fully loaded, people love. Uh-huh. Herbie. No, this is like. Duh, I, I'm a mouse. It's just when you meet her, she is this perfect, innocent little flower. And it is so f- incredible to me to know that she was railing lines of coke. Oh, yeah. Uh, but And was able to convince us mm-hmm. of that character, mm-hmm. who I guess if I'm trying to remember, I don't. We knew her from the parent trap. She was a big breasted girl. And I think people <laughs> liked that, you know? Yeah, she was not top the heavy. Conversation yeah, I was having. She's top heavy, and she wore a ponytail for the first half, and bl- in like we're little talking about in plaids. Mean Girls, not in fucking Parent Trap. Yeah, no, yeah. I know. I said Parent Trap, and Kelsey said she was a big-breasted girl. <laughs> yeah, I, so let's like sorry. let's yeah. get that out of our minds. Uh, but if I'm tr- I'm trying to remember, but was this the next we had big one? This was her breakout, obviously, yeah. and yeah. I guess that maybe to us now it's more shocking to see her play mm-hmm. the I innocent girl. I, I but don't at, see it as shocking at all. I think it, I. Th- still see her as that person i honestly am just like god i really hope that you get back to that but here's the thing 2005 honest. when this came out was the tipping point of her starting to get into the paris and I, britney and so yeah. this is what i wonder is yeah. did we were we actually shocked watching it of like oh damn look at her like yeah dress up I and did she start sense, did she start railing lines of coke after, after at the premiere yeah 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 because she was still a big breasted woman in this <laughs> and if she was railing lines of coke she would have had oh that little God. itty bitty titty committee situation she Wait. had oh it, it burns it away yeah does, does coke, coke makes you skinny but it takes away your titties well when you get thin the first place that goes is fat and your tits are fat Damn. and so is your butt that Guys, is don't the, do coke. The, don't we do coke. The, <laughs> the biggest. Coke That's why I am country, flat actually. chested as fuck. The war okay. on drugs is good, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't hate you because you're fat. You're fat because I hate you. That doesn't even make sense. I know. That's why it's wild. This movie is wild. Maybe we should address some of the guilt to this movie. There's not a few, none. but I think it's some ma- matters that we do. Oh, I, let's talk about Jonathan Bennett, the guy who plays Aaron Samuels. Yeah. It's October third. Um, he. Is a that's what you said, right? What you yeah. said? Talk about some of the guilt. Yeah. Okay, yeah. He was a straight. He was playing a straight guy. Yeah. He gay. He's gay. <laughs> Why is that a guilt? That's not a guilt. Is that Come a on, guilt? Is that a, is give a straight guy a roll. <laughs> 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 oh <my God>. uh, <laughs> <laughs> I joke. I kid. Come on. I joke. I kid. Oh <laughs> give <laughs> straight <laughs> men the roles I mean, that they really deserve. <laughs> They fucking can't get rolls. You know how hard it is to be a straight white man in Hollywood. <laughs> oh These God. gays are taking our roles. <laughs> These gay men playing straights. That is the funniest We're joke We're supposed you've to ever believe made. them kissing? Huh. Ugh. I mean, it's just a piece of plastic anyway. Um, Trang Pack? Coach Carr? I'm, I'm, it's a shame to me that um, uh, our hottie McHotty didn't have more roles after this because he's really good. Yeah. Yeah, he went, I think, the lifetime route. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. God, mm-hmm. I'm like shook from how funny that was. That was so funny. <laughs> Ooh. Sorry. Uh, I think the the most frequented guilt of this film and of, of uh, Tina Fey's au revoir yeah. uh, is that she has some blind spots when it comes to race. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't rear his head as, in this as much, though you do have some. You have like the the... the the, the girl from Africa joke being like the one black girl in the class. Right. The the Asian slut uh, stereotype, yeah. um, and and you saw that in some of her other work where there there's like a lot of there's, there's like a lot of yellow face like jokes, Rock, a lot yeah. of Asian jokes. There's a lot of seven thirty rock. There's a lot of stuff in um in uh, uh Kimmy Schmidt, but it's 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 always on the air of ignorance or mm. naivete where mm. it's just like, oh, I don't know how things work here, mm. and so I'm just going to go about my day and just kind of call people out on things. Um, so it's not forgivable in that sense, but it's of character. Yeah, this one had less of it. Um, For and sure, less of to it. To me, the, the, a lot of the race jokes landed. Like, if you're from Africa, why are you white? Mm. Fucking hilarious. Yeah. Uh, Katie walking up to a, a group of black girls and saying, Jumbo! Jumbo. Yeah. Like, 
oh wow, that yeah, is so uncomfortable. Like, you are course, so stupid. Yeah, You're playing it under they naivety. Yeah. Um, they do. Regina George drops the R word. Oh yeah, twice, several yeah. times. But um, she's also the villain. Yeah, I, I, you know it's funny. I, I was watching it in my office, and Eugene was hanging out with me, and I was like, oh, she said the R word, and I'm like, well. Back okay. then. In 2004. People were dropping people that shit. People said that. Said the that. most gay? popular song by the Black Eyed Peas yeah, was, was a song where they rid- used it a yeah. lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, It okay. was the chorus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so in my mind, I'm like, okay, maybe we don't like this and maybe this she doesn't stand for it. And just to make a film that feels accurately high school, yeah. you have to use the language that yeah. they used back then. But then they keep saying it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, you didn't have to keep saying it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, like oh, again, God. nobody saw it as such a slur back back, back then. then. Mm-hmm. Not to you know. Defend no, we didn't have social media word, to like. But. No one was advocating for that mm-hmm. yet uh, publicly right. in such a way that made us change our minds. The way that like gay, clearly we all knew what we were. We were uh, uh, being offensive. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what? Actually, uh, this reminds me of another. Uh, pleasure of the film is we're normally against voiceover right. but I was thinking about how crucial the voiceover in this film mm. is yeah. to making you love Katie mm. yeah. um, and, and I was thinking of the moment where she goes uh, Damien oh he's too gay to, f- to function, function. Uh, which Maybe is she's quoting when Janice said it yeah. right and so you get these lines in her head where as she's being a bad person she the voiceover she, she knows it and she yeah. wants to break free <laughs> yeah what? It's, it's uh, I mean, it's, it's an, it's inner monologue. It's yeah. just, it's that if you're doing voiceover, at least have a bit attached to it or a gimmick attached to it that like pushes the story forward in a way that doesn't feel like it's cheating. Cause it mm-hmm. honestly, it really doesn't push the story forward. It's just letting you in on the character a little bit more. It was just like, it okay, a, well, it keeps us from fucking hating her. Yeah, exactly. If you took the voiceover out, we would despise Yeah, It's Katie. just like, there's no reason to back. like her. I want my picture back. So funny. What was that one? That was um, That's Damien, Damien driving away. Yeah. Oh, Janice. That scene. Okay. Ugh, this is such a small, <laughs> small. But uh, Lizzie Kaplan comes and finds out that that uh, Katie's had a throwing party a party without them. And she, uh, Damien's driving and just goes, "I can't stop the car." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my curfew is at one a.m. Well, my my curfew is at one a.m. Yeah. It, it is one thirteen. Like, <laughs> really intense, like. Friends fucking I can't fighting. Help it that you're in love with me or something. And then <laughs> he's freaks. Oh like, no, you did. <laughs> what? See, that's the problem with you plastics. You gotta look at yourself in the mirror, Katie. <laughs> you're not pretending anymore. You are cold, hard plastic. And she has such a weird lisp. I love it. You can't forget it. Just the game <laughs> on top of that scene where it's like, what if Damien can't stop the car because it's past curfew? Yeah. That is so such a good detail that yeah. most movies they wouldn't have that. They would have her walk up. Lizzie Kaplan and Damien would walk up. Katie would run outside, and it would yeah. be shot, reverse shot, yeah. shot, reverse yeah. shot. Them They'd run away. Because boring. When you're when you're coming from the second city, I mean, and and it, uh, improv in general, mm-hmm. everything has to have a game. Mm-hmm. Every scene has to have something on that top of doing. it that you're Physical. doing physically, so that you it, it makes it not boring. Mm-hmm. And I, I feel like if she had that scene or if she had written that scene into it, I, I brought up Second City because that's where Tina Fey studied. But um, if she just had them talking, that as a as a sketch, as an improv game, it would like feel stupid. Mm-hmm. And people would be like, why am I watching this at all? Mm-hmm. You should be, you know, having some type of activity going on. And so, yeah, let's have them keep driving or something. Like, why not? You know, why not throw a game into every scene mm-hmm. and then let, let's just see how they play out. Mm. I feel really stupid, by the way, because we when we were talking about Lindsay's career, we forgot Freaky Friday. Oh, oh wow. doy. Yeah. doy. Did we do that on this show? No. Or haven't. Oh, cool. You got that to look forward to. That's a good one. Yeah, we I should do like a Lindsay go, something. I wanna get out. Lucky Where's lawyer. my fertility vase at the sink? Take <laughs> me away. I think this movie's just the bee's knees. Yeah. yeah. It's really good. Oh, you pointed this out uh, over text. Uh-huh. It's shot on film. Okay. That's great. Because we were rewatching and I went, Jesus Christ, has it just been so long since I've seen this that everything looks really grainy? Or was this, for some reason, well, shot on film? Not for some reason. It was it's 2004. 04. That makes it's me feel old. so... <laughs> Fucking old. There wasn't yeah. digital cameras yeah. weren't yeah. film quality yet. Do yeah. you remember the red camera came out when we were in college and it was like, oh shit, guys, mm. you can film on mm. digital. Wow. Wow. You smell like a baby prostitute. And then like mm. like Roger Deakins was like, 
people were like, no, film is the only way. And Roger Deakins was like, actually, this is digital is pretty dope. Pretty you guys cool. hear about the Alexa? And here we are. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. It's not really required for you to give a speech, so. <laughs> <laughs> so good. God, uh, he is so good. He's, he's so good. S Tim Meadows. Yeah. Yeah. Tim yeah, I mean, you have, we have Amy Poehler, we have Tina Fey, Tim Meadows, Anna Gasteyer mm. um, as her mom. Uh, you got SNL all over you this. fucking royalty. Mm. Um, Isn't her dad also the dad from Scrubs? The, the janitor, janitor yeah. from Scrubs, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's is, all comedians. Is he, no. Oh, um, um, this is a request from uh, a listener of the show, oh. uh, Sequoia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Hi, Sequoia. Um, she Hi, wanted to ask, who do you think is the meanest? <gasps> How could it not be Regina? Let me think about this. Well, a lot of people, I mean, there is the, everybody's using each other. Uh, Liz, Lizzie Cap. I forgot her name. Janisian. Uh, Janisian is revenge. using Katie it's like for revenge. revenge. It's the do revenge story. Yeah. Um, Katie is is literally poisoning someone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and like Regina bringing George, down her entire life. Regina George has been compared to Hannibal Lecter. So yeah. who out of... Shit, maybe Katie is the worst. I do. This has been argued before because here's the thing about Regina is that, yes, she is mean to everybody else, but we see her earnestly trying to welcome in this girl and make her, give her the makeover, give her the advice. Yes, she plays with her because she still wants to control her, but she's not ruining the lives that we can see. We've heard that she's ruined Janice Ian's life and reputation, and that's why she's an outcast and a goth girl, apparently, because she said she's a big old lesbian, which turns out not to be true, which is very funny. Mm -hmm. But, like, maybe Katie is the worst. Regina George versus Katie it's kind of like when the U.S. overthrows an, a dictator mm. and you're like, this guy's really bad. But then a militia comes in. You're like, oh, oh fuck, boy. we created chaos and this one's worse. I've got to say it's got to be Regina because mm -hmm. Katie wouldn't have to do what she does if it weren't for how bad Regina yeah. had made. Oh, you're going with the we didn't life. start the fire argument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't Re know what that argument is, but yeah. Yeah, Re Regina, <laughs> I would also say Regina because she is chaos and she represents Gals. chaos um, in a in a way where she doesn't have a reason for doing any of this mm, stuff. She's just rich and bored. Um, she is just rich and bored. And she wants is, to maintain this power. Is, this is definitely a through line I'm I'm stealing from Sequoia because we talked about it this morning. But like Smart even girly. still, it she doesn't have a want. It's just to put power. her want is to put other people down. She's pure sociopath. She's a yeah. pure sociopath. I mean, Katie we compared her to Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, <laughs> never forget. Katie though is like. She plans and is conniving in a way. Like, she literally has a board, which is like, get rid of her hot body, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> get rid of her Army friends. Army skanks. But like, boy, that man. is all Janice Ian. Exactly. All of that stuff is Janice's But Janice stuff. is, she is pushing, playing off of she revenge. Is, yeah, she she's was playing wrong. with, you know, I would, I would put Katie's third. I would say it is, is Regina, Janice, and Katie. I think that women need to start supporting women. This <laughs> movie proved that. We yeah, need yeah. to support, we can't tear each other down. Yeah. Which is so funny because Amy Poehler and Tina Fey are like staunch feminists, pro there's enough room for all of us, pro good for her, not for me, which is why this movie coming from that is so funny because at the end of the day, right, like when we cut to the later, you know, their senior year, we yeah. see that the plastics have been disbanded, but of course there's a group of freshmen that are going to become them, that there will always be cliques. But if you're lucky enough to disband that myth while you're still in high school, I think you'll better be set up for the rest of the world. Yeah, you grow up. Yeah. You grow up. Last mm -hmm. thing I was uh, I wanted to, to touch on was the Lebanese versus lesbian theory. <laughs> um, so there <gasps> is a... Sorry. What, what's the one? Oh, <laughs> that's so shit. cool. There is a whole... I feel so stupid. There is a that whole theory sense. and underlying, and I think is purposeful... Where um, uh, Janice Ian at the end says that she is Lebanese. So if her and um, Regina George met in middle school and she said that she's Lebanese, it is very common for a young person to think that you said lesbian. lesbian. And so I am going to then tell everybody wow. that you are a lesbian. Wow. And so that's where their their whole thing came from which she is, um, says i'm, miss, lebanese? I'm yeah. lebanese at the end oh um, my god that's so funny it's, Kevin i G think comes up to her and like <laughs> hits on her he, he says uh um he's a, uh, he says um, um um puerto rican and she like, goes i'm lebanese, I'm lebanese. He goes, okay nice. Nice. yeah yeah i think that's like a get out level uh that is a crazy detail. twist yeah it's very cool 
Wow. Yeah. So, but like you do pose a good question of like, is this a guilty pleasure movie? To me, I I know. I I think that it is an absolute firm pleasure because you don't watch it feeling any sort of guilt. Now we can look back and say some things have aged poorly, poorly, which is unfortunately true of a lot of comedy, but there's not an ounce of me that would ever agree to anyone calling this a guilty pleasure. You of course can vote. No, I mean like it's, it is really campy. Like it does toe the line of like, you're saying absurd things. Like there are some lines that like, isn't really real world aesthetic, but like, Mm -hmm. is this the definition of a guilty pleasure? I think we've established that for it to be guilty, it's that you don't want people to watch it. And for me, I'm like, it's a guilty pleasure and I want you to see it and love it and make it a cult classic. Interesting. So like in that regard, I think it is a guilty pleasure because it is the film that I'm like, I'm watching it no matter what time it comes on, where it's on. And I'm, I might not be telling people this is the hundredth time I've seen it mm-hmm. because I've seen it so many times I should stop watching it, but I will continue to watch it. Fair enough. I think it might be a guilty pleasure for wow. me. Um, no, I think it's a, a full pleasure. I think okay, that it full is. Pee, full I think send, that it, it it definitely set the precedent for what this style and genre of movie can be. Um, I think that uh, this is like such an airtight script. You don't even realize that they crammed so much material into ninety minutes. It is an hour and a half, an hour and thirty seven. Yeah, I think it's tight. Oh, it's tight. It it's feels airtight good. thing. Everything has an out. Every every scene has a point and a purpose. Um, and they, they got away with voiceover. Like, I just, I, I think it's, it's very, it's very good and very well done. Uh, I fucked up this show and we were supposed to do fun facts first. So let's do it. Oh, there weren't any. Okay. Cause we got some good ones. Oh, hell yeah. Uh, Lilo first read for Regina George. Sounds good. I did know that. Sounds good. Yeah. The casting team felt she was closer to what they were looking for, for Katie. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that Lohan, Lohan also feared that being a mean girl would harm her reputation in future movies. Rachel McAdams, meanwhile, uh, they felt that she had this, the fact that she was kind and polite made her perfect to then play Mm. such an evil spirited character. Okay. Uh, They had um, Blake Lively was considered for Karen Smith. Okay. I would watch that. That would be cool. Yeah. But Amanda Seyfried, who also read for Regina, uh, the producers then were like, no, this is our Karen because of her, quote, spacey and daffy sense of humor. <laughs> <laughs> Daff. Um, Lizzie Kaplan was not the type they were looking for, but when they saw her, they were just like, wow, yeah, no, she's Virginia got it. Yeah. not sweet. They were <laughs> just the way she says that. The I'll director really it. wanted, quote, a Kelly Osborne like actress. Huh. Uh, but they picked her because of her ability to portray raw emotion. I mean, she gets a little Kelly Osborne. She's got, I mean, you can tell in the yeah, way they that they styled her. Yeah, they they dressed her in a way. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, other people bangs. considered, you got James Franco, who was considered for Aaron Samuels. I believe it. Uh, James Franco was considered because of his resemblance to Faye's longtime SNL buddy, Jimmy Fallon. There it is. Oh, interesting. And then Jonathan Bennett actually replaced someone who was fired at the last minute. Can you imagine getting that call? Huh. Fired at the last minute. Do we know who that is? No. Oh, it okay. unfortunately Man, doesn't that say. that sucks. Yeah. Um, there were a couple changes made to keep this from being rated R. So one of my favorite lines, she made out with a hot dog, was originally... She masturbated with a hot dog. Oh. Nice. Which is raunchier. And then there's one scene where they walk in on uh, Jason and Gretchen kissing at a party. Originally, she was sucking his dick. Oh, wow. What? Okay. That would have made it a little more insane. And then they found it really difficult to keep the wide set vagina joke to receive a PG-13 rating. Uh, But they argued that the movie Anchorman also had similar dialogue and received that rating. So they were able to push it through. Nice, nice, nice. I love alt casting. Evan Rachel Wood was offered a role in the film. She turned it down. Westworld. And then this one hurts. Uh, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Miss Ramona Flowers herself, (gasps) was asked to audition for Gretchen Wieners. But her mom didn't like the script. So she declined. Wow. Okay, fair enough. That hurts. Her mom said it was like too raunchy. I guess. Yeah. Tell me about my pleasure. My pleasure. These are things in media that we are enjoying. Little wrecks to keep you going through the week. Um, I'm going to hit one. Uh, this, is, this episode is coming out long after it. Um, but right now, for us recording this, there's a new movie. I'm not telling you to go see this movie. Uh, I'm not telling you not to see this movie, but Charlie Day made a, mo- made a movie that is so clearly and evidently 
uh, and to his admission, a love story to the movie being there uh, with Peter Sellers. It is a phenomenal movie from the 70s. And so honestly, go watch Being There. This movie kicks ass. Uh, it is about a, a simple-minded gardener uh, who was raised on cable TV. And people within the Washington aristocracy mistake how stupid and simple he is for him being profound, and he rises to the top. Oh, this is what that movie that Charlie Day just did is yeah. made off of, but I told you it was so bad I had to walk out in yes. the middle of it. Yes. Oh, I walked out in the middle of it. Yeah. It was really bad. Don't go see that. That's not my pleasure. Yeah. But being there, it's really just so good. Peter Sellers, it's one of his best performances which is saying a lot and it has a final shot that uh still rocks me every time i think about it mm. yeah. uh my pleasure for this week is a book that came from book talk i am very deep into book talk especially into like the ya world uh there's a one that i'm currently in the middle of so i haven't finished it but i hear the ending is cry cry and it is called every last word and the main character, whose voice we are inside of, deals with panic attacks and OCD behavior, and they portray it, portray, portray it. I was trying to say depict and portray. So that's a new word, uh, in a very real and um, awesome way. So that's my rec. Nice. What's up, weebs? Go watch <laughs> Suzume. That shit is fucking is a slapper and it fucking bangs. It looks it's so really good. Sad. What is it? Um. So there's this uh, new. I. I Blank on his name, but there is a guy that they're calling the new Miyazaki. Miyazaki. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, Miles is excited. And he directed so, the other movie that I'm blanking on. That your you name. Love. Yeah, your yeah, name. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it is, um, it's definitely very in, inventful. It's very beautiful. It is, I'm, I, I kind of. Have I'm kind of having a hard time even speaking about they it. They played a trailer for it before a movie I saw, yeah. and it was so clear that they had no idea. They were just what? like, "This is beautiful. We're just going to show you a montage yeah. of shots." Yeah, prompt like just I, trust us and watch it. Just trust me and watch it. There's no there's no way to talk about it without being like, "Oh, this is going to you know spoil the situation, or this is going to ruin your your viewing of it." Go into it blind. Watch it. Just watch it as a as a as a, a piece of art and a piece of media. Don't try to like think. Oh, this doesn't make sense, or I don't I don't understand what this reference is, or what what they're where they're going with it. Trust me, it leads to a point that is phenomenal. Um, but yeah, it is very pretty. It'll make you weep hard. Mm. <laughs> so Suzume mm, is I really good. Crying. Yeah, that's our freaking show, gang. And of course. Our hot ass yes! guilty pleasures oh, merch took it off already. <laughs> is uh, available Yuck. at tryguys.com slash guilty. Um, I don't know. Garrick's got some shows around LA you can come see. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know where they are. But, <laughs> but go see him. Go, go, see go him. check it out on Instagram. He'll tell you where he's going to yeah. be. Whew. That's the show. That's it. Wow. I'm at Corny and all the things. I'm Kelsey Dara and all the things. I'm Garrick Bernard and all the things. And until next time, you can't